Chess is such a simple game when it is played in the hands of one of its absolute masters. This game is played by Tigran Petrosian, and he dominates this position really by controlling only one square. And this is a very strategic game. This is a game about really understanding chess at a deep level, not getting bogged down in complex variations, but really digging deep, understanding it. He's playing this game. This was the Candidates Tournament in Amsterdam in 1956. His opponent is Grandmaster Ermin Pilnik. Petrosian has white. Pilnik has black. Let us jump right in. D4 is played by Tigran. Knight F6, C4, and Pilnik plays C5. Something of a risky decision against an opponent like Petrosian, granting him space right out of the opening by playing the Benoni. And uh, Petrosian goes ahead and grabs that space, of course, by playing D5. A black could play the sharpest line, which is e6. This is the modern Benoni, where you quickly get a very unbalanced position. Black's queenside pawns, pawn majority, and dark squared bishop versus white central space. But Pilnik instead plays e5. And white, by the way, does not want to take that pawn off the sant because then black gets a nice center by recapturing with the f pawn. Uh, so Petrosian just plays knight to c3. d6 and e4. And here we have basically a classic Benoni lock structure. And the reason black allows white to get this space advantage is because they have two ways of sort of breaking free in the position. They have a, a clear plan. One is either to play, to remove the knight from f6 and play f7, f5, gain space on the uh, king side, or play b7, b5, and gain space on the queen side. Um, the main way this is handled today is usually bishop to e7. And black will clear this knight out of the way and try to play bishop to g5 to trade off his bad dark squared bishop for white strong uh, dark squared bishop. But in this game, g6 was played by Pilnik, treating it more like a, a regular King's Indian, wanting to fly and keto his bishop. A knight to f3 by Petrosian, bishop g7. And here Petrosian plays his signature move, bishop to g5. In fact, when he plays this in the regular King's Indian, it's named after him, the Petrosian variation. Uh, and the idea is fairly simple. He knows that black wants to generate counterplay by moving the knight and playing f7 and f5. So by pinning the knight, the knight can't immediately move, and he slows down black's uh, counterplay. So Pilnik plays knight to a6. He plays for the other pawn break instead, the b7, b5 pawn break. He wants to play the knight a6 uh, to c7. Bishop e2, the knight goes to c7. Try to support b5. Knight to d2. And here... He could possibly play bishop to g4 at some point and trade off his bad bishop. Uh, Petrosian could, and also it allows him to play f3. And this knight at d2 could become active on the queen side. Bishop to d7, Pilnik continues to build up for the b5 push. But Petrosian plays a4, really clamping down on the b5 square. It would be a mistake for black to play a6 with the idea of playing b5 here, because then uh, white can play a5 and lock down that weakness on b6, and otherwise black just creates a weakness if he advances the b-pawn. So instead he plays b6, which is a slower way to play b5. The idea is to play a6, rook to b8, and then push through uh, the b5 move. But Petrosian plays an interesting response, a very powerful move. He plays knight to b5. Now, it immediately attacks this d6-pawn, and, and black has to make a decision here. Uh, he can defend the pawn with bishop to c8, allowing the queen uh, to defend, but that's a pretty passive move. Or he could take uh, white's knight in one of two ways. Um, he could take with the knight, and that was probably a bit better, um, but instead he takes with the bishop. And my guess is he was thinking that since this was a locked structure, that uh, the knights would be better than the bishops. But the bishops can emerge even in locked structures, the bishop pair. Uh, so CB5 by Petrosian, and now this C4 square is available for his knight. It's a very powerful square where it radiates all kinds of power, attacking D6 and so forth. Black castles, and now a really strong move, B4. He doesn't just put the knight on, on uh, C4 yet because then, you know, black could kick the bishop and take on E4. Um, but what he's done here is he's put black in a predicament. If black takes on B4, then white can play rook c1, c6, and plant a rook deep in that c6 square. But if white takes on c5, if black takes with a b pawn, then white would get a 2-to-1 two, two queenside pawn majority. If instead he takes with a d pawn, 
then white would get a protected pass pawn in the middle of the board. Basically, it's all bad choices uh, for black from this point. Uh, he plays h6 first, and uh, what black's idea is here, when the if the bishop moves, let's say to e3, is to play knight d7, c5, and plug up that c file so the rook can't get to c6, and that knight at c5 would be well placed. So because of that, Petrosian goes ahead and takes that knight off of the board. He doesn't want that knight d7, c5 maneuver to be played. Queen takes f6, castles, and now rook f to d8, anticipating threats against the, the d6 pawn, and knight to c4 comes and puts pressure on d6, and uh, the knight is occupying a powerful square. Bishop to f8 to add another defender to d6, and black is in a position he knows he just has to hold on, and he defend against Petrosian's threats and hold on tight here. Petrosi knows he can kind of do what he wants. Um, he plays g3, keeping the queen out of f4. Uh, going ahead and taking on c5 was also strong, by the way. But he knows he doesn't have to play that yet. So now black takes on b4. And the key idea here, this is the main square. This is the one square that Petrosian wants to dominate. If he can dominate c6, then he knows he'll have a, a winning position. And all the battle here sort of revolves around that one square. First, he plays queen to b3. That connects the rooks. Uh, they can plan their path to c6, and of course, it's going to take the b pawn back with the queen. King g7, rook f to c1, racing for that c6 square. He can grab the b pawn later. h5, trying to generate something on the king's side. And now knight to e3, clearing the way for the rook to go to c6. Knight to e8, adds a defender to the uh, the pawn at d6. He has another idea with that knight, though, and Petrosian has to be aware of it. He goes ahead and takes the, the b4 pawn, rook d to c8. Now, he himself, if he's allowed, he'll play his own rook to c5 and block that file, but Petrosian has to go ahead and play a uh, rook to c6. That, that rook cannot really be taken. Um, if black takes on c6, Petrosian could just take with the b pawn, he plays the bishop to a6, controlling the queening square, advances the a pawn, and black is just completely busted on the queen side. So uh, queen to d8 is played, and this is a, there's a key idea here. And uh, he, Petrosian goes ahead and doubles rooks. And now knight to f6. Now this is the key idea for black. He wants to play the knight to d7 and c5 and block the c file, disconnect those rooks, and keep white from having that activity. So Petrosian has to do something about that, and his next move is quite strong. Bishop to f1. The idea is that if black plays the knight to d7, he plays bishop to h3, pinning that knight to the rook, and then he'll just take it and uh, have a massive advantage with a much superior minor piece. So black then moves the rook over. So now there won't be a pin after bishop to h3. So now again he's threatening knight to d7. So the bishop has to be played there right now. So the knight would be captured again if it landed on d7. So with that plan sort of snuffed out, Pilnik tries to generate some pressure on the a file. He plays a6 to open up that file. And here Petrosian plays a classic Petrosian move, a, a mysterious rook move, you might call it. Uh, rook to e1. Now what he's doing is he's preparing to defend the e4 pawn with the rook. I mean, the knight's in the way right now, but it will move. Why would he do that? Well. Because the, the pawn is under pressure from this knight, and he wants to he doesn't want the queen stuck defending it. If he plays f3, then he's weakening his own king, and after pawn takes pawn, uh, the rook can come to a2, the pawn can come to h4, weakening those dark squares, and black actually begins to get some real counterplay after that. So he doesn't want to defend that pawn with f3. That's why he plays the move rook to e1, to defend it with pieces, uh, not create weaknesses. a b5, a b5. Now knight to h7. He's trying to generate some play with the knight going to g5, unblocking the f-pawn. However, he's taken his knight off of that knight d7 c5 circuit that he was on, which means this bishop doesn't have to stay on h3 any longer. The knight goes to c4, attacking d6 and b6. Rook to a2, preparing pressure on the f2-pawn. And now bishop to g2. The knight can't go to d7, right, because it's on h7. So now the bishop can be used to defend e4, and that rook can find another place to go, which is important because queen to f6 is black's next move, threatening queen to f2 check. So he uses his rook to defend her. See how he doesn't want to play f3. He doesn't want to weaken those pawns. He uses pieces to control those vulnerable points. Um, 
knight to g5, putting some pressure on e4, but also knight to f3, check, uh, could maybe create some problems. But Petrosian easily repels that idea. Queen to b3 hits the rook, controls the f3 square, black doubles, rook b to a8, and now h4. And the knight has nowhere to go. It has to go back to a very passive h7 square. And now rook takes b6. Petrosian has got his material from his strategic play, and he has that passed b pawn. Uh, but black still has some tricks up his sleeve. Rook to a1. Uh, this is part of uh, his threats on the king side. What he's doing is basically pinning this f1 rook. The rook goes to c6 to clear the way for the b pawn, and rook 8 to a2. And black has a very serious threat here. He's actually threatening queen f2 check, leading to mate in 2 The rook can't take the queen <laughs> because it's uh, pinned by the rook at a1. So Petrosian has to do something about that, and he plays queen to e3, just keeping it all defended and also supporting the b-pawn as it advances. Queen to d8 to control that square in front of the pawn, but first of all, he gives, gets rid of one pair of rooks. He actually could play b6 here. That, that would be fine. Uh, but rook takes a1. Rook takes a1 check. King h2. Knight to f6. Of course, at the moment, he's threatening to win white's queen. But now f3. Now that those rooks are gone and the threats are gone, he feels comfortable going ahead and playing the f3 move and keeping that king's side uh, solid and uh, that it's not as weakening anymore. The queen goes to b8 to attack the b-pawn, queen to b3 to support it, knight to d7, controls b6, but also that knight is aiming at c5, b6, knight to c5, queen to b2, hits the rook. Also, maybe there's some potential pressure against black's king here. The rook goes to a4, attacking the knight, but now queen to b5. Defends the knight, attacks the rook, the rook goes back to a2, and now rook to c7, and he's making inroads. He's threatening knight a5, knight c6, uh, coming in, and uh, uh, black is in serious trouble. G5 is played. He's trying to create some activity on the king side. Uh, I don't know what else he's going to do. The problem, of course, the immediate problem is he weakens his own f5 square, which Petrosian immediately plays knight e3 to jump into that square. Gh4, knight to f5 with check, king to g8, and then he takes the pawn at h4. Rook to a6, attacking the b pawn twice but he can just advance it. He actually doesn't have to worry about his rook being taken because then he would just promote to a queen. and He'd win a queen for a rook, basically. So rook to a7. Now three pieces attack the b7 pawn, two pieces defend. How does he deal with it? Well, rook to c8. He allows the pawn to be taken by the queen, but then queen to e8. Threatening, queen takes f8 check, which would be a mate in two. Uh, and the queen at b7 cannot defend on e7 because the knight at f5 controls that square. So he has to defend with his knight, and then knight to d6. Hitting the queen, and also threatening queen takes f7, check, leading to a quick mate. And in this position, Herman Pilnik resigned. An incredible strategic game from Petrosian. You can really dig deep and see the ideas that he used in a chess game. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon.